everybody plays its part. Body language is not limited to specific parts of our body. Every part plays a role, sometimes on its own, other times with the help of friends from all over the body. The head will be our starting point and we work our way down towards the legs and feet. Microexpressions, which are technically a part of the head, or rather the face, will get their own chapter, because they are so special. And the same goes for the seeds. That chapter will include signals that try to mask or impose a certain attention, no matter what body part. The head. Even without microexpressions, there are signals we can give with our head. It's either about what our head does, or what we do to our head, usually with our hands. The nod and the shake. The probably most common two signs we use in our daily lives are the nod and the head shake. Yes and no, agreeing and disagreeing. And besides the direction of the motion, up and down or left and right, rhythm and speed are also very important. A slow nod is used when we agree with something we see or listen to. For example, someone is holding a lecture about body language and we share his opinion. Hmm, that seems about right. If we disagree, we tend to slowly shake our heads. Nope, I don't think so. A head shake with a higher rhythm can be seen when a higher stage of disagreement is reached. Nope, that's just bullshit. And the same goes for nodding. A fast rhythm means, oh yes please. Something I can often see in meetings when I propose an urgent solution for a sudden problem. Nodding can also be used during a conversation both by the speaker and the listener. If we listen to a person, a nod is a sign of, yes I understand, or I'm listening, please continue. It shows that we are paying attention and are interested in what the speaker has to say. And as the speaker, we can use well-placed nods to help influence the listeners to agree with us. For example, after making a statement or asking a rhetorical question. Isn't that what we really want? We nod to suggest the listener, yes, it is. In my opinion, the, let's call it, listener's nod to show interest is very effective. I make constant use of it, especially in conversations I'm digging for information. If we show our conversation partner that we are interested and approve what they say, they tend to get more talkative. They talk about the background of things or existing links. And furthermore, it opens the door for some digging questions like, um, that point I don't completely understand. Because we already build up interest, the question seems legit, we need more information. If we sat there quietly for 10 minutes and asked the same question, we make the impression that we didn't even pay attention. Nodding in order to influence people, let's call this one the inception nod, works. As simple as that. Maybe you heard the name Richard Thaler. He won the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economics for his work in Behavioral Economics. And together with Cass Sunstein back in 2008, Thaler popularized the nudge theory. It describes little indirect suggestions and small positive reinforcements to steer people into desired direction. For example, on my way to work, there is a solar powered traffic sign that flashes a green happy face when driving below the speed limit and a red sad one when driving too fast. And let's take a look at our example. We ask, isn't that right? Accompanied by a positive reinforcement, the nod. This little nudge might be enough to get indecisive or doubtful listeners to our side. We practically answer our own question whilst asking it. Head positioning. Head tilt. Besides the listener's nod, there's another way we can use a head to indicate interest in a conversation. The head tilt. It is described as a sign of interest or says in a powerful way, I am comfortable, I am receptive. But a good reason why actually, I couldn't find. I showed a picture of the dog because that is, in my opinion, where this sign originates from. 
And the funny thing is we don't even know for sure why dogs do it. For me this one is one of the most controversial signs. The explanations range from being interested to the tilted head exposes the cardioid artery on the side of the neck and may be a sign of submission and feelings of vulnerability. Yeah, I don't know. Let me tell you what my experiences with the head tilt are. I was looking for an alternative for the listener's nod. Using it perpetually makes one look like a bobblehead. And after approximately one year of head tilting, I noticed mainly two reactions. First, none at all. Second, confusion. The moment I tilted my head, I could instantly see the what the heck is he doing expression on the faces. And moreover, I barely noticed anyone else doing the head tilt, especially not for the sake of raising interest. But where you can see the head tilt in action is the television. For example, in the show How I Met Your Mother, Season 2, Episode 7. It even gets described by the protagonist Ted, head slightly tilted to give a sense of vulnerability. And as far as I'm concerned, this sign did not work out that well. And the whole showing the artery for vulnerability might be true if we are facing a fucking vampire. Chin. Another way we can send signs with our head, or rather our chin, is by raising or lowering it. This is some body language probably everybody knows and understands. It even is listed in the dictionary. Hold your head up high. To be very confident and proud. And the opposite, a lowered head, indicates insecurity and discomfort. With the positioning of our chin, the whole posture can be affected. The shoulders drop, we lean forward and start to slouch. This can be the case if we cannot fulfill our own expectations, we are disappointed with ourselves. And we don't want to talk about it, we don't want others to know and we don't want to be seen. Therefore, we lower our heads, because we try to steal ourselves from the gaze of others. And overall, we feel vulnerable, and therefore we slouch, making us small and taking kind of a protective stance. And the complete opposite is the raised chin, often accompanied by a straight posture, broad shoulders and a stuck out chest. We want to be seen, and we want people to know we radiate with confidence, and that is correct. I did that. You can't touch me. As you might notice, the raised or the lower chin and the accompanied body posture are very primal signs. But unlike the head tilt artery thingy, this behavior can actually be observed in human behavior. After a test, an exam, or meeting, whatever, pay attention to the people leaving the room. You can clearly see who has a good feeling and who thinks he or she might blew it. Another sign we can do with our chin is the, let's call it, what are you looking at? It's a very quick chin raise, addressed and pointed to a specific person or group. This sign is a mix between confidence, insecurity and aggression. Usually we can see people make the sign who try to stay in charge of a situation in which they just got exposed of doing something wrong or behaving outside the expected social norm or are paranoid and think that someone even cares. They perform the what are you looking at to show hostility and challenge a person in the way do you have a problem with the situation? Do something, I dare you. The last time I saw the what are you looking at a sign from the regular dimwits who yell that exact sentence was a pillock I gave thumbs up to after he almost ran me over on a crosswalk. Greeting Nod The last sign we take a look at regarding the overall head position or movement is the greeting nod. And that is exactly what it is, a nod that functions as a greeting. But to make it a little more interesting, there are actually different variations. The first type is the acknowledgement nod. That movement is focused downwards. In my experience, mostly seen as a greeting between two acquaintances. For example, two people who work in the same building or floor 
and they see each other throughout the day, but don't actually work together. It's common courtesy to acknowledge the presence of each other. But careful not to confuse this nod with a bow. More in a later chapter. The second type is the what's up nod with an upward focus. Like the name suggests, this kind of greeting is more like a hello, how are you doing? The intensity of the greeting can be adjusted by the height of the nod and the facial expression. For example, with a smile and raised eyebrows. But what raised eyebrows mean, we take a look at in the next chapter.